what we might do is we might just um, make a start with it all. Um, and then others who join can just join in and, and pick up from where we are. So tonight, last week, we looked at man-to-man uh, -man defense, which this week we'll go the other side and look at a bit of offense. Um, we're due to have myself, Drew, and Jess Wayne talk tonight, but unfortunately, Jess has let me know that she can't make it on tonight, so she can't be a part of the night session. So it'll just be uh, myself and Drew presenting. So what we'll do first is we'll... Um, Pass over to Drew, and Drew can start us off, and then and I'll finish it off. And any questions, just put them through the chat box, and um, we'll get to them at the most appropriate time. All right, thanks. Over to you, Drew. Cool, mate. Uh, if you just... Sorry? If you just want to let me share my screen, that'd be good. Oh, yeah. Should be good to go. Okay. Uh, we'll just get this sorted. There's my calendar. That's the one I want. Cool. So you should be able to see my presentation there. Cool. Um, so basically you can using progressions. Um, I wanted to uh, one talk about progressions and I wanted to two talk about the layer, I guess. Uh, the reason being, we all are around basketball stadiums a lot, and we see the layup practiced a lot. We see a lot of lines, we see a lot of cues, we see a lot of teams practicing layups. You know, one on zero, or just sort of um, sort of ungame-like drills, drills that aren't really replicating what we're seeing in games and putting the kids under a bit more pressure. So what I wanted to do is go right back to the start. How do I teach the layup? And then how do I progress that as the kids become better at being able to do that skill? So uh, I came up with some progressions and these progressions can be used basically for any skill within basketball. So you can relate this back to any skill, passing, uh, shooting, um, all those sorts of things. But basically, the start one is we want to teach the basic layup, focusing on right and left hand, and then we want to progress it to, so that's also correct footwork. So correct footwork, for right and left hand, and then progressing the next step, once we can do that, is progressing on to the right and left hand layups, and being able to do both right and left hand layups off both our right and left feet. Very important in this day and age with the dribble drive perspective, being able to score sides of the ring can give you as a player a massive advantage over your opponent. Uh, the next progression, can you now do this with your eyes up? So can you do a layup with your eyes up, being able to see what's in front of you? Uh, the next progression being, can I now do this at speed? Then moving on to, can I now do this with contact? And then the last one, can I drive to the basket going to make a layup? And then if conditions change, can I make a decision? So if defense decide to all sag, and I've now got three defenders on me, can I make a decision to stop, find a player and pass the ball out? Or can I make the decision to change direction if one defender jumps out in front of me and finish off uh, in a different way. So I've got some videos to show. I'm really crossing my fingers. We did do a test run yesterday to get these work. I'm really crossing my fingers that these work. And it's basically um, all to get drills to be able to teach the kids the layups. I've used these drills throughout toddler hoops. I've used these drills at development squad. And I've used these drills at our under 12s. Uh, um, and I think to date with quite a bit of success. My under 10 Hammers team, I've got, uh, I think I've got eight players, seven or eight players in that team. All of them can do a basic layup. So, um, so far with this plan, I've had quite a bit of success. Uh, if we go over to the first one, so the first point is starting, focusing on right and left hand. The important part here, first, before we focus on shooting right or left hand, We've got to be able to get our footwork right. So can I step 
inside, outside, or can I step outside, inside, foot, uh, and be able to jump off one foot. So the first drill here that I'll show, um, and forgive me, the, um, the videos don't work in the PowerPoint presentation, but if I jump to here, I can show you from here. And Lockie, just tell me if these are working or not, right? Um, Just go back. Yeah, work. The videos are working. Um, I just want, and you should now be able to hear a bit of a bit of um, audio from 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 this guy, the coach. What I like about and why I shared the audio here is what I like is the way he corrects the kids when they don't quite get it right. So he's not yelling at them. But again, just highlighting a little fact that they might not have got they might not have got right. So just see if you can pick that up. And Lockie, just give us a nod that you can hear this. I'll play this a couple of times. Jump. Boom. Good. Right, left, jump. Oh, that was the wrong foot. Let's go back. Start right at the cone. Here we go. We're gonna step right, left, jump. All right, ready? Go. Right, left, jump. Perfect. Next. Go. Right, left, jump. Perfect. Right, left, jump. Yeah, good. Right, left, jump. Oh, one foot. Right, left, jump. Good. All right. So I think we get the picture from that one. Basic footwork drill where we want to go right, left, jump off one foot, reach up with our hand and give the coach a high five. Really good to get kids to understand jumping off one foot. A lot of kids come into basketball. They've only ever been shown how to jump off two feet, jump with two feet. So... Jump off one foot, something really new to them. And then the next part, the next part of this is um, being able to shoot the ball. So a basic standstill position and be able to use the backboard from a layup position. And we call this part grooving our shot. So really good drill for under 10s. Um, under 8s, if they're strong enough. I know we lower our rings and we use smaller balls. If you're under 8s, if you're coaching under 8s, Maybe use an even smaller ball to be able to get the kids to reach the height. But I'll show you this drill here. This one's just grooving our shot and learning to be able to shoot the actual shot part of the layup. Uh, I don't think this one has any sound. But basically standing under the ring with one hand, bending our knees, extending up and shooting that one-handed layup. So a really good drill to show the kids at practice and then get them to, to say, right, you can go home and you can do 20 with your right and 20 with your left. Really good drill for grooving and growing strength in our arms and being able to finish with one hand on either side of the ring. From there, we're now going to combine the two. So combine our footwork, combine our footwork with our shooting. So a really good video here from uh, Breakthrough Basketball uh, I really like these guys. They, um, I really like this website. They have a lot of really good stuff. And right at the end of my presentation, I've got uh, all the resources, everything where I've got these. This one goes for a little while and for three minutes. And he'll just explain a couple of little progressions on this. I'll pause it a couple of times and just have a bit of a chat. But a uh, really good explanation on what we want to do from a beginner perspective, teaching layups. Shoot layups. Okay. Sam's going to start right here close to the basket. He's going to start with his right foot forward, left foot back. He's going to get low so he's ready to explode. And he's going to take a step with his left foot, jump. Grab the ball, come back and do it again. Right foot forward, now extend up. Okay. All right, after they do that for a little bit, we'll add just another drill that we can show kids at training and tell them that if they want to become good at layups, you need to do 20 of these every day at home or 50 of these every day at home. We just build that strength up, build that confidence up and do these at home on your own. Two more points of emphasis for them to work on. Now, one thing I'm a big believer on is that you finish with your chin up, eyes on the target through the finish. A second thing that you'll notice is a lot of players, when they shoot their layup, 
They have the ball here, and they sweep it to the inside of their pop body before they shoot the layup. When I teach defense, I actually tell my defenders on the fast break, don't go high, especially if you're not a leaper. Aim for their hip pocket, because most players will bring the ball back here. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna start the ball in our right hip pocket, and we're gonna keep it on that side, and focus. Now these layups can be done from both sides of the floor. So if you do it on the left side, come over here, Sam. Rather than start with his right foot forward, we would start with our left foot forward. The next progression is to add the dribble to the layup. So right now, Sam's around the three point line, get closer to here. Now, just like in the first progression, we're going to start with our right foot forward. Okay, so he's got his right foot forward. So, our second progression is, can I do this left and right hand? We've covered that in those first two drills. I can now do the layup with my left and with my right hand, and I have the correct footwork for either side. The next progression, the next part of this, is being able to do it on either side of the ring with both feet, with both hands. So, you would use, they don't do it in this video, but... All you would do for right foot forward on the right hand side of the ring, you would start left foot forward on the right hand side of the ring and still finish with your right hand. So you would just change your foot foot over, but stay on that side of the ring. He's going to take one dribble, then he's going to shoot the leg. Make sure to keep that right hip hop. And we do the same thing on the left side too. Switch the feet. Instead of starting with, I think you started left foot forward, you would start with your right foot forward to do the other footwork on this side. You know what's going to be on the left side? Just like when he was in close, he started with his left foot forward. One more second. Okay, so the next, so we've just covered, we can now do a layup with both our left and right hand. Uh, if you, like I beat, we've now covered being able to do left and right hand and left and right foot. Our next progression is being able to do this with our eyes up. No video for this section, but it's as simple as get a coach under the ground, under the basket, sorry, get the coach under the basket. And as they're coming in to do a layup, hold up a two, hold up a three, hold up a four, and get the player doing a layup to call out the number that you've got up. This will get their eyes up. And ideally what we want is we want to hold our hand up, up closer to the net so our eyes are up at the... Calling out what number the coach is doing. So great to really get the child's, to get the kid's eyes up, looking at the ring, looking up above, focusing on their target. Our next progression, can I now do this at speed? All right, so... We can do it quite comfortably without looking down at the ball. Uh, now we want to be able to start doing it a little bit quicker. And for this, uh, there's a little drill there just to illustrate it. I haven't got it. the videos I've got for this drill aren't that great, but um, we'll see how we go. Uh, there's a little pointer. Are you able to see that? Not sure. Yeah, we can see that. Okay, cool. Cool. So in this first illustration here, we've got number one with the ball, with the circle, and then X is the defender. So basically number one dribbles the ball outside the three-point line, and at any stage, he can cut and go to the basket. The rule is defense number one can't enter the three-point line until the guy with the ball has. For his layup, and then defender number one is chasing him behind. I've got a couple of videos just to show this drill. So here we have the child in yellow staying outside the three-point line and the child in green chasing behind him. In a minute, he's going to change direction and change speed because he knows he's got the defender chasing him. 
uh, like I said, the videos weren't that good. I'll just show that again. Next video is of two on two, but you get the picture of the child chasing around, around the three point line. So the child with the ball here, chasing him this is two on two so we've got a help defender and then a, a second offensive player white guy goes in and then passes it out he attacks and then passes out so i'll go through i'll go through that second part in, in a minute but that drill without the two on two that drill in itself being able to dribble around the three-point line do a dribble move, change direction and attack the ring, knowing that you've got someone chasing you behind, knowing that you've now got to go at man at the ring. Now we're starting to do layups at a bit of speed. All right, uh, where are we up to? Where are we up to? So next, so that's being able to do layups at speed. Next we've got, can we now do this uh, against contact? So I've got a couple of drills here um, that help with this. A uh, good little drill for warm up before the game. This drill. Wait for that to clear. And here you can see. Two guys going out and attacking each other. So if I just go back a little bit, the next two guys in line at the top here, right? So the defense starts with the ball. The offense has to rip the ball out of the defender's hand, and then that's when they can go. So as soon as the ball's out of the defender's hand, the defense has got to run around a chair and then challenge. And the offensive guy does his rip through. So he rips the ball through like we want to practice, ripping the ball through nice and low off the defender. And then he... Sometimes you won't, but we want to get kids starting, getting used to being able to finish the layup, focusing on the ring and not worrying about contact that might be coming. So I'll play this for a bit. Rips it out, attacks, and now we're going against contact. And then this just shows that we don't have to do it from the top of the key, we can do it from all from all different angles where we rip through and go around the around the uh, chairs and it's defense is coming out from a different angle. Uh, the next one, sorry, I need to go back. Okay, so the next one is a bit of a favorite. Um, the old ball on the back. In this video, all they do is they only put their hand on the back of the defender. What I like to do is actually put the whole ball on the back of the defender. So I've got a rip with the ball to get past. Let's wait for that to clear. This, has got, this video started a little bit late, but he's ripped the ball off, the ripped the hand off the back of the defender there. The defender's the guy in white, and he's now attacking the ring with somebody next to him, riding the contact all the way to the ring. You can see here, faintly, the green guy has his hand on the back of the defender. Like I said, I like to have the ball on the back, so you've got to rip attack um he's got his hand as soon as his hand comes off they go one-on-one -on -one. and then these guys do it as well really good drills for um practicing layups with contact being able to finish through contact next we have and last of all we have can we make Good spelling there, Drew. Can we make a decision while doing And I want to go back to the cat and mouse drill that we did earlier. So now what we do is we add in a defender, like that video showed, we add in a defender and an offensive player. So can we now attack the ring and make a decision? I reckon this drill here, this cat and mouse drill, kids love it. Kids absolutely love it. Um, and we're learning quite a bit out of it too. I'd love to see this drill practiced at Craigie Bird a hell of a lot.
Okay, so green guy dribbling, defender trailing behind him. He can only enter, defense can only enter after the ball is entered. We're creating an advantage situation. We've got help defender and then second offensive guy. Can green make the right decision? We attack, defense comes to help, like exactly what we want. Can this guy make the right decision? A lot of the times in domestic basketball, Guy, the green guy, just go in and shoot the ball. We want to be educating to be able to make a decision, pass to the open player. What I, the term that I use a lot with my players is I want to pass to where the help has come from. So this help guy, he's came from this man. So I want to pass to where the help has come from. Nice easy pass and an open shot. I'll let this play for a bit. Oh, the next one's better. The next one goes a bit longer. But that's basically what we want to do. So we want to start making this. Be able to understand what's going on when we're attacking the basket. And then the last one, the last video here for me. Uh, same drill, I think. But we've uh, taken it a little bit further. So same drill again. So now here, we've added actually in two offensive. I really love the outcome of this. I think we get, I think um, his first one, they might get a three point shot. Uh, and then the one after, we get a really nice, easy inside layup because we've been able to move the ball. We've been able to penetrate, kick, pass to where the help has come from and then pass again and then get an open shot. So we pass out to the open guy, we get a shot. And then this one here. Pass it open, nice easy pass underneath the basket. And now we get a shot. So basically, that's all my videos for today. Um, and what I wanted to show you, I think there's some clear progressions there on how we can teach our kids a layup. I think the last couple of drills, specifically, the ones at speed, specifically the ones versus contact, and the last one around making the decision are the layup drills that we need to see more of at Craigie Burn. We need to get away from seeing drills where all we see is people dribbling and doing layups. The quicker, the quicker we can get out of, and if I just go back up here, the quicker we can get out of stage one, one, two, and three, as in basic layups, right and left foot, and then eyes up, the quicker we can get out of doing those layups, um, the better we'll be. We can start practicing the game of basketball under basketball conditions and the improvement from the kids will be so much quicker. Questions is that it's okay to go back. So you can go forward quickly. And if you find that you're doing these drills versus contact and no one's even been able to dribble into the ring, then just go back a step or go back two steps. You know, you don't have to qualify from a skill and go forward without going backwards. You can still always change and go back and say, oh, I've got a couple of kids that can't quite do it. Well, we just need to go back for a couple of weeks before we go forward again. Being open to adjust where you're at and why the skill level of your kids is huge. The point of trying to um, chuck kids into the deep end quicker. So yes, a couple of good layups. One, two, can do them on zero. We can do them on air versus no defense. Let's have a crack at chucking some defense in. I'd do it sooner rather than later. Um, basically, that's my presentation for tonight. Um, if anyone's got any questions, just shout out or send them through. Thanks, Drew. Some good points there. Um, some of those videos were a little bit laggy. Um, do you have those that we could send through, like a link or something to everyone? I do. I can share them all. Yeah, perfect. So um, I know some there's always issues when you have Zoom meetings and playing videos. There's a big drop down speed dramatically. Um, but what we'll do is we'll organise to get them up and um, so everyone can have a look at those ones. I will send out um, I'll send out uh, YouTube links links to them. Yeah, cool. All right.
All right, now onto my stuff there. It's similar, similar to Drew's, not exactly the same. Um, I'll just share my screen here. I'll share everything. The last time I did that and um, had issues. All right. Cool. All right, perfect. So I'm talking about, uh, once again, offensive skills, but I'm only looking at um, one on one teaching how to how to uh, play one on one and, and what to do there. So um, teaching how to play one on one, I think this is really important because even though the game is five on five, it's a team based game. Basketball is all about how can you create an advantage for your team and and utilize that advantage to score. Um, it is a five on five game, but it's about um, using your skills to beat your opponent, which makes the defense. Uh, do something which then makes you make decisions to, to do to get better. So the most common way to do this is through one-on-one um, -on -one face up. Um, as athletes progress in ages and they get better and better, uh, they'll do more things with two-on-two, -on -two, three on three. There's lots of tactics in that. Um, there's heaps of tactics in three on three, especially when that that's going to become um, an Olympic sort of sport. And there's a lot of three-on-three -three hustle going around, three-on-three -three competition, heaps of those. Um, so that's a lot of screening and, and keep finding space and lots of tactics there. But you can't utilise those screens effectively unless you know um, how to play one-on-one -on -one and, and what to do. So in the past, every team I've taught, I've always looked at doing one-on-one -on -one moves, whether that's domestic and representative, um, under 10s. Not so much with my girls yet, but um, when I was doing development sponsors on the boys teams I've had in the past, with a heavy amount of work on learning one-on-one -on -one moves. And um, it's not as complicated as, as it may seem. It's really quite easy and um, to learn the basics, and, and that's all you really need to know moving forward. So how to teach it? Um, similar to sort of Drew is, you, you know, start small and then, and then add to it and build on it. Um, from my teaching background, we always talk about learning in three stages. We talk about, you know, first level is you, you build your knowledge. So that's similar to when you first teach it. So the first stage is where you look to explain the skill and, and why it's going to be beneficial to use. So why should they use it? Why should they know this? And it, it's really good if they have some background knowledge that might go, oh, yeah, I saw, I saw that guy use it, you know, who might play in the men's team. Or I've seen LeBron, you know, do something similar like that. That's going to just increase their buy-in and it's going to be uh, better for them to learn and probably quicker. And so after you have that sort of build that knowledge of why you're doing it and you run through the skill of, of one on zero and they get the footwork right, where they've got to go, the body movements. And then I always talk about moving to the next stage, which is sort of you make some meaning of it, which is just getting reps at it, practicing it. So getting lots of practice of one on zero. So you, you can do it quite fluently. You know how to do it. You can do it at an appropriate pace. And then at that last stage is it's when you apply your understanding. That's when you're, you're put into a situation and you've got to use what you can use. And that's when you bring in one-on-one. -on -one. So once the players understand the footwork and the finer details, they know the moves they've got to make, then you get them to practice replicating that at, at the same time with, at the same time as defence. So this makes it a lot more realistic because that's how it's going to be in a game. You're going to have someone on you in a game. So you try and recreate that in your training session um, so they get the best practice for it. And then later on down the track, you, you look to bring in more players. Um, exactly like that um, Drew, Drew showed before, but the cat and mouse, they started with the one-on-one -on -one and, and they built it up to you know two-on-two, three-on-three, and eventually you could probably bring in five-on-five. Five. Um, so Drew's a good like that. So skills to teach, the most important thing is uh, triple threat position. If you teach from under eight, as soon as they can pick up a basketball start doing things, even toddler hoops, we talk about triple threat position, um, catching the spot or having the ball in a position where you can do the three main things in basketball when you have the ball. And that is pass, shoot and dribble. All right, so I was able to troll through and find a really good picture here of a triple threat spot so you can see Eb in the picture there from where she is right there she could do all three of those things from that where the ball's positioned her feet she's facing the basket she could shoot the ball from there she could pass it she could put the ball on the, on the floor 
So there's the three things she can do, which makes her a little bit unpredictable. If she turned herself, had her back to the basket, well, that limits what she can do. And that means the defense has the upper hand. All right. So I remember last week we spoke about defense. We spoke about making them uncomfortable. All right. That's what you want. Put them out of their comfort zone. Offense, you want to make the defense uncomfortable. You want to be on the front foot. You want to be able to dictate and do what you want to do. So the most important thing is to be having those shoulders and feet and hips square to the basket so you can um, shoot, pass, or dribble. Um, so, and from that position, there's a few other fakes you can do to try and gain that advantage. Um, and, and there's sort of three main fakes we'll talk about, which is in essence trying to shift the defense so then you can make an attack in a different direction. So the three types of fakes you talk about is number one is a shot fake. So faking the, sh the shot, trying to get the, the defense to leave their feet, jump at the ball, so then you can go around them. It's really important when you're teaching this is when they do the shot fake, um, the players need to make sure they stay low. If they rise up and they bring their whole body up, then that's just going to take longer to get the ball on the floor and, and make them move around. So the best way to do that is just a simple just ball fake. All fakes, the ball needs to move. Um, we spoke about last week about when you're playing defense, you, you watch the chest because wherever the chest moves is, is where the body's going to go. Um, so we're going to make sure we're really convincing with our fakes um, and, and, and be very um, shot-like when we're doing that one. So we stay low uh, and we're ready to react and move where the defense doesn't. So hands are positioned. You bring that ball up quick, straight back down, and then move into where the defense isn't. Next one is a dry fake, or it's commonly called like a jab step or jab fake. That's when you have your non-pivot foot and, and you step in a direction and attempt to sort of like you're going to move. Um, I'll show you a bit of a picture of a, of a, it's hard to find a picture of a um, jab fake. So here's a video um, just on YouTube. No sound needed, but you can just watch this guy here. Um, this is um, Jordan Lordley. He, I watch a lot of his videos to get ideas from my clinics I do. Um, he's played, he's played NBL um, and he, he's a bit of a trainer now for NBA players. And I think in the past he said he's worked with Camelo Anthony and some other big names in the NBA as a one-on-one -on -one trainer. So he's made a name for himself like that. So we're just watching go through some jab steps now. So he's doing a bit of a jab fake and then a shot fake. So his foot steps out, he uses those shoes where the defense would be. And that jab fake is one foot stepping outside, hopefully the defense shifts that way, and then, and then he moves the other way. Um, that's simply what a, a jab fake is. It's just um, trying to get the defense, you're moving your foot, trying to get the defense to move that way, and then you move the opposite way. And a common question is, well, what if you did that jab step and they don't move? Well, simple answer is if you do a jab step and they don't move, you go that way. All right, if they're not reacting to, to your fake, you go ahead and do it. So if you do a shot fake, you do a shot fake and they don't react to it, then you can shoot the ball because they're not going to reject you. You have a clear, clear spot to shoot it. And the last one is, is a pass fake. Um, common pass fake is will make the defense, you know, Playing good defense, they'll jump to the ball or they'll look in the other direction to where the ball is going to go, which then allows you to do what you want. So they're the, they're the three fakes that are really important to sort of teach at a young age. And, um, you know, these jab fakes, shot fakes, you know, I have done with my under 10 girls and I've done with all my groups and even um, my under 14 when I was coaching them, I still do. And, and one thing um, I know Drew watches a lot of or listens to a lot of podcasts and I've listened to a lot of podcasts during this break. And when I get back to my, my youth boys training, um, there's one thing I'm going to make sure I include a lot more in that, and that's one-on-one. -on -one. So that's something, you know, right through from under eights all the way up to, you know, under 23s these, these guys are, is um, lots of one-on-one -on -one practice um, because it's so common in a game. Yeah, the important part is here is some drills you can use to help teach this. I think this is important. I can talk all day, but I think the important thing is, and the most valuable thing for you guys, is to look at some drills that you can you can use and utilize. So this is pretty much a very simple, 
pretty much the same document I sent you guys last week. All right. And we're going to look at this drill here. I know it's under the defending title, but it's actually a really good drill to use for one-on-one. -on -one. So it's just two players out here you know, on the three-point line, the 45. Um, and I always say, so player one has the ball and player two doesn't have the ball. But I have them both facing um, the sideline out here. So they're both facing the same direction. And then player one will hand the ball around one side of the body. So in this instance, he's going to pass it around player two's left-hand side of his body. And then once that player two catches or hands the ball, he's going to turn and face the basket using that foot as a pivot. So if, if that was me standing there facing the sideline, he's passed around my left hand side of the body. I'll pivot with my left foot to face the basket. And then from there, um, we're looking to play one-on-one. -on -one. All right, and, and looking to use those fakes to go. Um, a good thing about this, this drill is it does have progression of, of what you can do and, and move it on. But um, for a beginning, beginning drill, this would be a really good one to start with. All right. Um, there's another one down further, which is um, probably from a good starting point. I'll try to find out where I've put it. I think I put it in shooting. Um, and unfortunately, you guys won't have this one, so I just added this one today. And no. Uh, not that one. Where is it now? Don't worry about that. I'll just get it up on my program I use. Ah, uh, this one just here on the on the right hand side over here. So simply, it's starting at the foul line here, and one player with the ball. So you start there with the ball facing the the the, the basket, and um, you have a cone, or sometimes I stand there as the coach, um, they should have a body. And then the kids land a jump stop, two foot jump stop, and they do one of the fakes. So to start with, they go land jump stop, then a two foot jump stop, they do a shot fake, and they'll drive to the left and go do a layup. Go to the back of the line, next person goes. All right, shot fake, go to the basket. Depending on how many people you could have, you could have multiple lines, all right? You could, you know, push these lines out, and you could have, you know, one group there, and then you could have another group winding up on this side. And you could have two groups going. All right. You could even have three groups going. You could have one group there. You could have one group there. And one group there. All right. And, and they all go through that. And they rotate through each spot. That's, just, that's, an, that's an option. Depends how many plays you have. All right. And, you know, and I know I always have some parents that's hitting the sidelines over here. You know, I know parents always love to get involved. So you can always ask them to, to jump on and just be a body here and stand there and um, let the kids triple around them and, and be involved. So I always start with the shot fake is probably the most, most common. All right, fake the shot, going around, doing that layup. But make sure you're going both sides. All right. And, you know, footwork-wise, you always talk about whatever way you're going, you make sure that, um, you have, you protect the ball with your leg and your hand. So if they were to go in this picture here, go to the left, they would make sure their right leg stepped across in front of the, the coach and their left hand dribbles the ball. That way, if anyone goes to steal the ball, they're reaching across their body, they're probably going to get fouled. And then the other way, you go with your left foot. Left foot across, dribble in your right hand, keeping the ball as far away from the defender as possible as you go. So you can do that shot fake first, and then you can look to do that jab fake, jab and go or jab and go the other side uh, and make your drive to the ring and then do your pass fake. Pass one way, look to go pass fake and then drive the other way. Extension to this is bring in two lines. So have one line down here at a court on the baseline and, and the other line here. And what happens is player one will then pass the ball to player two, comes out and plays defense. All right, they run out and then you make your moves. And if you do this drill, <coughs> excuse me, the one important thing that I'll stress that I always find, the first thing kids always want to do is when they get the ball in a one-on-one -on -one situation, is straight away put the ball on the floor and dribble. They want to bounce the ball. 
you want to sort of discourage that. Don't put the ball straight away until, you, until you're going to go somewhere. All right? Catch the ball. Look, let the defense come to you. Throw some of your fakes out. And once the defense is moving, react to what they're doing and then put the ball on the floor. All right? There's nothing worse than the ball gets past you. The kid goes, awesome, got the ball, takes the bounces, picks it up, and like, oh, I can't go anywhere now. So catch the ball, have a think, throw some shot fakes, some jab fakes, or some pass fakes, see what the defense does, react to that, and try and get a score. So even off this one, I've done it in the past where it's a pass. Sometimes when it's a pass, the kids rush and it's just it's chaos. So another alternative is uh, player one here would dribble out, jump stop, and hand the ball to player two. So they're right there in front of them. So they hand in the ball and they're nice and close, ready to play their defense, and then you make your jab moves and, and go and play. Um, that, they're two are probably my favorite ones that I use and the most common ones that I use regularly. But um, in saying this, there's tons and tons of different one-on-one uh, -on -one drills you can, you can bring out of this. And as I said before, you can have the different lines. And even off this, you can go from one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to two-on-two -two and, and, and so on, and you can move up and up and up. All right. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I just want to ask the thing as well. I had um, an email sent to me uh, this afternoon asking about clarifying from last week's session. And they asked about the difference between a zone and uh, pack line defense. So last week we spoke about man-to-man -man defense and we spoke about pack line and how um, it's man-to-man, -man, but it's when you sort of uh, protect the key a little bit more and, and how is that different to a zone. The main difference is, um, what I will do actually is, I'll share my screen and I'll get, um, I'll get the picture up. And it'll probably uh, be yeah, up. great question. Really good question. Very good question. So, here's last week's presentation. And that's the picture we're looking at. So that's what we're talking about here, pack line defense. All right, so if all five offensive players were outside, um, that's where the defense would be. Now, <laughs> in a man-to-man -man defense, if player two moved down to the baseline, player three moved down to the place baseline, then defensive players two and three should move down with them. They should drop down lower, all right? But in a zone, they wouldn't necessarily do that. And zone would morely have people plonking in spots and not really doing anything. So. When you have your zone defense, it's your occupying space and you're responsible for plays that come into your space and it's morely uh, protecting a lot more of the key. Whereas pack line is protecting this yellow arc, which is a little bit further out. So um, zone is a lot more defensively cramming the key and pack line sort of crams this pack line, as they call it, which is where it comes from. And then you've got the three point line. But once again, we want to go that denial defense. So I hope that's um, answered the question. Yeah, mate, well I'll, enough. Just add, I'll just add a little something. Um, I think the biggest difference for me between zone and pack line, it's, it's, quite, it, it's quite a simple one. Um, if your man cuts, you're still responsible for your man. So you have to go where he goes. Yeah. Basically. Whereas in a zone, and if your man cuts, you hand him off to someone else who's in the next zone where your man is going to. The big difference. So zone is switching men. Pack line is staying with your man no matter where he goes. Yeah, it's a good way to put it, actually. Yep. Whereas, you know, you'd follow them through and responsible the whole time. Whereas in a zone, you'd be, you'd be responsible for a different, a range of different people. Yep. Whereas man to man, you've got your own player. And as Drew's popped in the chat box there, if you do have anything you want covered, um, let us know because, you know, these sessions are more to help you guys, uh, the things that you um, might want help with at training, match, match time. Um, you let us know what you want. Uh, next week, our next session, we'll be looking at um, doing sessions or doing activities with um, advantage, disadvantage and small-sided games. So that's we something about this, but are we going to break for the holidays? Um, I haven't thought about that actually. Um, 
let's go with, I'm not sure with people's availabilities it'd be like. Um, look, I'll send an email out and we'll see who's keen. But at this stage, we'll say, yeah, we'll do it. And, and then we'll notify by email otherwise. All right. So we'll be looking at small side of games and um, drills to do with advantage and disadvantage. Thanks again for joining us tonight, guys. Appreciate you taking the time um, to improve yourself as coaches. And uh, fingers crossed we can have some news out next couple of days about uh, return dates and when we can come back. Uh, thank you. Thanks, everyone.